Hi, I am Roxy. I am based out of the Seattle area, but I reach all Lush land. <laughs> Hi, my name is Louisa. I've been working with Lush for about five years now. I'm also very excited to be here. Hi everyone, my name is Quinn and I am a shop manager for Lush Cosmetics here in Kitchener, Ontario. I remember when the pandemic first started, I would get side eye and dirty looks. It made me feel really uncomfortable taking public transit. I mean, I'm kind of thankful for the face masks anyways, because it gives me a little bit of anonymity. It's very frustrating to know that I just can't be myself fully in the public arena like that, knowing that someone has it in for me just because of me being Asian. Not even trying to sound paranoid, but it's a valid concern and that's exhausting. People ask me things like, where are you from? I'm actually from Ottawa <laughs> originally. Like, so I will say that, but when they then go, well, where are you really from? It's just really exhausting. And for me, it's a really difficult conversation because it brings up a lot of trauma from my past and my family of why we have to be here. So it's just really sad to know like all of the work that we've done that our families have done to contribute to build our lives here, but we're still questioned. The first thing that comes to mind is just the fact that like I can't be with my family right now and that's the part that kind of hurts the most. I can't see my mom that often, I can't see my grandma and my family that I feel like most safest with and it sucks because I would love to be during this time when folks that look like us are being attacked because they look like us, I can't be with the family that I'm from and the people that I, I love and I cherish the most. So I think there's a lot of pain in the, in the disconnect with my family there. And that's the part that hurts the most. When I was growing up, there was only six Asian or Pacific Islander students in the whole school. And we were targeted. My mother prided herself on unpacking Asian themed lunches, which were delicious, but it is traumatizing because everybody makes fun of your food and was used several times to start a food fight. And I'm like, oh, what, 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 what's going on here? Sometimes the teasing and the practical jokes and the pranks got so bad that I had to leave school. All these kids who learned how to tease and make fun of me and just be cruel they learned it from somewhere. And now today, you know, 2021, I still see it, but in different forms. Maybe it's a little more subtle or maybe it's a little bit more overt. It's not really that much different. Because of, you know, the model minority myth, like we're told not to complain, talk about it because we don't have it as bad. When I was younger, I just felt like I kept it in. I didn't even share it with my parents. And now as I'm older, I realize how many of those times have happened. And now when they happen, I do feel more brave to speak out about it and to tell people about it because we just don't talk about it enough. I have the language now, the knowledge to speak up about it versus letting people just continue to project their racism on us and, and hurt our communities. My mom is like the first person I can think of. She's like a really special person in my life. So I'm Chinese and Mexican, so I'm half Mexican. And my mom is Chinese. So she came as a refugee from China during the Cultural Revolution. She came in the 80s. She was the first one to bring her siblings and she brought her parents and now she's a paralegal. So she helps with working people into the system. We grew up, like I grew up in the system and we grew up on welfare as well. And I'm so proud of my mom and like everything that she does and all the work that she does. She's so strong. She went through a revolution. That stuff isn't easy. So there's a lot of trauma that she's carried for her entire life that I'm still learning from and I'm still learning about. She's awesome. Like, I, like that's all I can really say. I love my mom. My Asian side of the family is very large. There's lots of aunts and uncles and cousins scattered across the globe, all from a very, very strong matriarch, my grandmother, who is 99 now. <laughs> this little tiny firecracker. And she instilled a lot of family ties and pride and a strong work ethic. I see that in my mom and my uncle and my aunts and pretty much everyone at that level in my family are small business owners somewhere in the world. 
building a foundation in a new country and taking those steps to create a better life. I wanted to talk about my eldest aunt on my mom's side. She's one of the reasons why I am here today. My parents grew up during the Vietnam War and are actually um, Vietnamese refugees. So they fled their country after the fall of Saigon in 1975 and risked their lives to come to the Philippines actually. So we didn't come to Canada first. And I was born in the Philippines. So I was born in a refugee camp and my parents and I are Vietnamese refugees. And without my eldest aunt supporting us financially to afford them to even risk their lives to cross the ocean, I would not be here today. And so seeing my mom work throughout her life here in Canada really has given me a lot of inspiration to see hardworking women of color who have come from very little and wanting to give us a better life. It's really inspiring and I always think whatever they've gone through, I can do because they've given me all the tools and resources that I have now. I'm hoping there's a shift in world energy and people willing to take that next step to put us all on more equal footing because we all deserve a place at the table, a safe place at the table. You know, I think allyship in that way, like it's going to come from, you know, what you do with your friends and with your family and how you talk about those things. If you want to engage in this conversation, be fearless in this conversation, bring it to your family. There's a book named after this, Revolution Starts on the Table or It Starts at Home. That is so something that everybody needs to take away, that action and advocacy is behind closed doors in your home. It's trying to speak to your family about it and making a mistake and getting upset and being frustrated with them and coming back and doing it again. It's not gonna fix itself tomorrow, next week, next month. It's gonna take a lot of work. Focus on what you can do personally. Pay attention to politics, just stay educated because they want you to not do anything about it. And the more of us that allow that to happen, we're still gonna be here 30 years from now and our kids will be the ones doing this type of video. I hope that every step is a step forward and that we don't move backwards. I, I love it. I feel even more connected now. <laughs> I can't wait to hug you guys. I can't I wait know. to hug all of you. <laughs>